the story of my hair has articulated points of rebellion and then a growing comfort in who I am. South of France, near Marseille, in Aix-en-Provence. That's where I grew up, went to high school. I grew up with really short hair and I wanted long hair so badly. I loved long hair, I loved dresses, I loved how it felt, it just flowed. And so I would put all of my clothes on at the same time to kind of layer and make it flow. And I would put a really long towel on my head <laughs> and put a rubber band and I would have this like long uh, towel of hair behind me and I would, that was my long hair. I did have long hair by the time I was 12 like down to here. Shaved underneath and I dyed it jet black because it was the time when like The Crow, the movie was out. That was the thing, I would pile it on top of my head. I was a swimmer at the time, so everyone else around me was not uh, eccentric in their presentation at all. You know, it was a point of rebellion for me. I have such love for that 17 year old that I was because now I have these beautiful pictures of me as a young swimmer at the Olympics. Like I was a beast. I was so big. I was so tired of this assumption of what it meant to be a female athlete. The young boys and men around me were given such an allowance of what they could do. Like they could eat anything they wanted. They were encouraged to, they could go out, they could party, they could, you know, shave their heads. I knew I was doing something that I wasn't supposed to do. I was like, these people have to cope. This is ridiculous that me shaving my head would be so problematic. I'm also out at this time. So it just was, became very complicated to be out and a swimmer. Like this is 1998. We were getting killed still. And so forget about it in an athletic environment. I uh, quit swimming and I uh, lose my scholarship. I moved to DC from Tucson, Arizona. And I met a girl and I fell in love, 21. She had really, really long hair and uh, wore dresses and I really liked her. And I say that because she then went on uh, her own journey of transformation, cut all her hair off, literally burned all her dresses and understood that she self-identified in ways that were not feminine. And I'm like, okay, well, I know how to be a girl. And this I think is where her hair for me became less about rebellion and more about compliance. This is what a woman looks like. She wears long dangly earrings. She has really long hair. She wears dresses. She wears heels. She wears short skirts. I was beautiful. My hair was wild and long and it was bleached blonde. I didn't know I was gonna get emotional. I don't think I have entirely reconciled the, um, extent to which I was willing to compromise myself. But when I look at those pictures, I do feel proud that I was able to kind of like create a mode of survival for myself, but so saddened by the degree of performance that I was willing to go to. And you would think, right, that there would be more of a loss of self when I was younger and kind of like doing it. Uh, um, but the, the loss of self for me actually happened during that time between the ages of like 24 into my 30s, yeah. That girlfriend and I broke up. I probably got involved with like the most dangerous person for me within 500 mile radius. That relationship ended up being physically abusive and uh, went back to France for a little while and then moved to New York. The clothes that I wore and wear still today came back into my life. And I have these <laughs> pictures of me during like this transition time that I just love, you know, cause I just have this literal wild mane of hair, but I'm wearing, you know, my favorite heavy metal band shirt with like a chain pocket, you know, hey, like it just is just this juxtaposition that I love. And I remember telling Jason, 
who has done my hair for the past 10 years. I think I like girls. And he's like, yes. And I was like, nah, man, like, I think I like girls, like ladies, you know, like girls. I definitely dated masculine presenting women. The, the uncomfortable truth is that I was hidden under all of these layers. So I think that there was probably some transference happening there. There've been so many iterations of me, <laughs> just kind of like wildly sculptural component that has been my hair. And it's so nice to be in a place where, I mean, it's weird to say, but where like, it's not about my hair. <laughs> you know, this, is this rebellion, then this compliance, and then I just am so relieved that there's a little bit of a coming into one's own. <laughs>